Okay, first of all, all praises to Ahia in the name of Yeshaya. And uh, hopefully Brother Santi will, will, will get this message and he can probably post it. Uh, the first thing I wanted to speak about this evening, if you all can hear me, is uh, garments or the garment part of things. Uh, when when learning that you are Hebrew Hebrew now I'm going to stick just on the man side probably touch on the woman side just a little bit but just on the the male side of things real quick uh, and after I go into that I'm going to just briefly touch on that and then uh, I'll go into this the thing that's happening with this movie Asher in which they're going to demonize uh, people or black people who understand that they're the children of Jacob and why they're going to do that and also I'm going to touch upon the conspiracy that's out there that now that black people are taking hold to their Hebrew culture that they should embrace white Jewish people because the white people could be Israel too due to mixing that's the new thing that's out there now where they're not denying that the blacks are Hebrews but now they're just claiming well we were Hebrews too that mixed and turned white so I wanted to address both of those and once we're done uh, I'll open this up for questions first off as a people, as the children of Israel, we lost our heritage. So, you have to realize when a people lose their heritage, they tend to cleave to what they believe is right. Now, is, is there anything wrong with that? Well, of course not, because, you know, in your ignorance, you can only go by what you think is right. But it's another thing when you come to the knowledge of the truth and with that knowledge you decide to operate in the same spirit in which you were under ignorance. And I'm saying that because let's go into the garment thing real quick. Uh, one thing that some people have been taken aback from is when they see black men wearing what you see on my head now it's called a mitri it's not a turban it's a mitri but as you can see the sides of my head is covered but the crown of my head is uncovered there's a purpose for that because you're not supposed to cover the crown of your head now most people, I know that when I first put on a Mitri and walked into one of these little stores, when I, you know, in America, like 7-Eleven or whatever, the, uh, the Arab guys would look totally shocked at uh, a black man, or what he perceived to be a black man, wearing a Mitri. Of course, with that, there was a little intrigue, and he treated me and others like us a little different than he treated other people who were in ignorance so that told me he must have known something also if a sane person who probably lived on the same block as I live wore a kufi and walked into the same store he was embraced as a Muslim and you know sometimes they would say assalamu alaikum which is the Muslim greeting but still it was no surprise to the Arab seeing a black man wearing a kufi but when you wear a mitri then it's alarming let's go into that on your screen I'm going to show you something I need you to pay close attention to this one by one
on your screen you see a black man wearing a kufi he's a Muslim so my question to you is this black man here this man here he's also wearing what you would call a, a kufi covering his head but the difference between this black man and this black man is that this guy is a Muslim and this guy is a Hebrew right let me give you some more here's an image of a Kufi okay and here's a Jewish Khazar calling himself a rabbi I know it's cut off at the top but over his head he's wearing a kufi okay here's another guy who's an Arab or appears to be an Arab but he could be if he put on a yarmulke he could be Jewish alright he looked a little, you know, Mediterranean like. He also was wearing a covering or a kufi. He's a Muslim. To show you the distinctions here. All right. We got another guy right here. Now he's a Christian, supposed to be a Christian. Now, what's confusing is that he's wearing the same thing as the Muslim and the Jew alike right and I got one more for you last but not least so that we're not on this all night I have one more for you we got a guy here who's also went to Israel paying homage to the wall putting his wish within the stone because he's worshiping a jinn and you're gonna find the people with this kufi on their head deal with this same wall in the Middle East whether you Muslim or Christian and they all wear kufis so that leads us to ask why if the Bible told us to have Mitri's, why and who wear Kufis? Let's see. Let's go to Numbers 15 and 38. Numbers 15 and 38. Numbers 15 and 38. Read it. Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fr fringes in the borders of their garments. Make them fringes in the borders of their garments, read, throughout their generations. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders, a borders of blue, a, a borders, a, rib a ribbon, a ribbon of blue, a ribbon of blue going into garments. You might see, and I've made garments for years. Lately, you haven't seen any videos with me wearing garments, and I'll tell you why in, in a minute. But I've made the garments, and I've wore the garments. There are some past videos that might be out there that show me in the garment with uh, fringes and borders of blue. Am I against the fringes of border in, of blue? Absolutely not. That was com a commandment. But this is going into the customs of the Hebrew opposed to the customs of the heathen now you don't see the heathens in any of the pictures that I've shown wearing fringes of borders of blue why because the Most High did not command them to the heathens were following something else let's go to Deuteronomy 22 and 12 Deuteronomy 22 and 12 Deuteronomy 22 and 12 read thou shalt make the fringes upon the four corners 
of thy vesture. Go ahead. Wherewith thou cover thou coverest thyself. Now when you it says fringes in the four corners of your vesture. So you had fringes on the four corners of the bottom of your garments. Men and women and children had this to show that they were Hebrews. Now, the North American Indians had fringes all of one on their garments, proving to you that they were the children of Israel. So were the Bleakwa Taino Indians before they were slain by the conquistadors. This was a custom of the Hebrews. Let's go to Leviticus. Let's go to Exodus 29 and 6. Exodus 29 and 6. Exodus 29 and 6. Read. And thou shalt put the metri upon his head. Thou shalt put the metri upon his head, talking about the children of Aaron, which are priests, but the Bible tells us under Christ that he would make us a nation of priests. Thou shalt put a what? And thou shalt put the metri upon his head. Thou shalt put the metri upon his head. Read. And put the holy crown upon the metri. And put the holy crown upon the, the metri. But we will not put a crown on top of our metri because Christ is king. Christ is king. So what? Our head is open. But we have the metri, which is a custom of the Hebrews according to the Bible. So my question is why if Jewish people who are claiming to be Jews... Why are they wearing yarmulkes? Why are they wearing what looks like kufis, but not metris? See, these things need to be examined. Okay? What they're wearing are not metris, brothers and sisters. They'll tell you. So you're going to find that these people over in Israel are heathens. And their customs are heathen. And also... Our brothers who are wearing the kufis and are wearing the yarmulkes are also following the customs of the heathens in, in ignorance. That's what's going on right there. And we're going to show you how that was introduced to our people, understanding that our with the Most High deal with our spirit. The spirit is in the crown of our head. You notice when a baby's born and you see that little thing uh, moving at the top of their head, the baby's crown, you watch that carefully. Okay? And it, it's, it's, that's where the spirit resides, in the crown of the head. So the Bible tells us that a man is not supposed to cover his head or he dishonor Christ. So yes, we wear the metri, but we do not cover the crown of our head. That's a custom of the heathen. So let me go into detail here, going further in scripture to verify or to quantify this. You, when you go into the scriptures, it's clear. The question shouldn't be, what's on your head and what are you wearing? The question should be, what are these people wearing? What are the Jewish people wearing? Why, why they don't get any pushback? Why when a brother walk into a store with a kufi or a yarmulke, he gets no pushback. But if he walks around with Dimitri, it looks like it's strange, as if it's not in the Bible. This is showing the children of Israel awakening to their true heritage. Let's go to Zechariah, the third chapter. Now, mind you, to wear it is a choice. It's a choice. It doesn't make one more spiritual than the other. Let's make that clear. So by no, by, by no uh, stretch of the imagination are we telling people or suggesting or telling people it's a commandment that you put on a metri. That's your option. All right? That's your option. Okay? But we put it on. And it's a difference when we do put it on. Okay? Because it's distinguishing those that understand from those that are following the ways of the heathen. Okay, and there's many ways to do that, but this is a silent way of doing that. Go to Zechariah th 3 and 5. Read that. Zechariah 3, verse 5. Go ahead. And I said, let them set a fair metri upon his head. Go to the verse before that, 3 and 4. Zechariah 3 and 4. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, 
Take away the filthy garments from him. Take away the filthy garments from him, showing you before the baptism. Read. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee. I have caused thy sin or iniquity to pass from thee. Read. And I will clothe thee with change of raiment. I will give you a change of raiment. You know we have to have new garments. Read. And I said, Let them set a, a fair metre upon his head. Let them do what? Let them set a fair metre upon his head. Let them set a fair metre upon his head. So this shouldn't be foreign. It's written all the way from the beginning in Exodus up until what I'm reading right now in the book of Zechariah. So this wasn't foreign to the children of Israel. So all the Israelites going into the customs of Israel and the fact that we witnessed slave ships and all that. But yet, you have totally ignored this custom right here. You got people out there wearing yarmulkes, people out there wearing kufis, and have didn't even do the research on them. I'm about to show you the research of when those things were introduced to us by the Greeks. Yeah. That's why you have your Pope wearing it and the Jewish people wearing it. The Romans and the Greeks introduced that to us. And when they took our temple and they converted even back then after Antiochus Epiphanes and after, after during the time of the Herodian dynasty, they were in the temple acting as rabbis with kufis on, which, was, which came from the heathen custom. That was them integrating their heathen customs within Hebrew heritage. So I'm going to go in a minute, I'm going to go into the introduction of when the heathen made it almost made it a, a commandment for those that wanted to follow their gods and come under their culture, you had to cover the crown of your head. That was part of the heathens accepting you. By the same token, the example I can give, if you're working in the corporate world, if you come into the corporate world and you walk in and you want a job, here it is. They say, well, listen, you can have a job, but you sit there with a full beard and you're sitting there with locks hanging down your face. You know, we can't have that. You have to be clean cut to deal with our clients. Now, right there, I have a choice. Either I can hold to my culture and say, listen, this is me and you have to accept me or and, and I can then I run the risk of losing the job or I can compromise and get what the heathens are offering. That's the example. And I'm going to show you that that happened. But before we go there, some people might ask, well, why we don't wear the four guards? Why we don't wear the fringes, borders of blues? Let me knock that out clearly. I, I have no problem with anyone wearing it. You should wear it. But we made an educated decision not to put it on, especially when we started teaching. And the reason why is because where I came from years ago, starting in the early 90s, there was a bad aura that came with being an Israelite because they, we were known as people who would just curse people out and call the white man the devil. I don't ascribe to that teaching. I feel that you can do more. You can wake up more people with truth and understanding than demeaning or cursing another person out. So I didn't want the words that we were bringing forth at the time. I didn't want our garments to get in the way of the information and of the Holy Spirit and the truth and the baptism. Because immediately, if someone would have seen us out teaching, even though it's a different understanding, if someone would have seen us teaching the same as someone two blocks away with garments on cursing someone out and we had on the garments, and they didn't like they 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 walked away from them. They would immediately, before even hearing us, walk away from what we had to say. And we figured the truth was more important because once you get the truth, you can learn the culture of what to put on. You can learn what you need. But I didn't want that past stigma on the work. And that was a, a decision we made to be wise as serpents and harmless as a dove. Not to say them wearing garments were wrong, but 
we chose the other road, which, which is more effective. Okay, let's go to uh, Romans 2 and 28. Romans 2 and 28. Read. For he is not a Jew, which is, which is one outwardly. This is what Paul meant. It is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Don't think because you are looking like a so-called Hebrew that you being the Jew that Christ was. So we go into the customs, and usually when brothers and sisters first get the word, of course you want to put on a, a culture or put on garments that distinguish yourself from the heathen. We understand that. We promote that. But you still should be wise. Like, for instance, it wouldn't be wise to send your child to school with a full Hebrew garment on, with fringes and borders of blue. Why? Because they will get a caseworker and take your child. Now, yes, you stood for righteousness and you stood for your Hebrew culture and your freedom of religion. But look at look at the headache it, it'll take to get your child out of the system. Also, if you're you have to realize some people ask you, well, well, how do y'all get on certain shows and how did y'all get in certain venues? Because when people met us initially, they they met people who they didn't, you know, they didn't suspect. They didn't know we were going to bring what we bring up because we didn't come with full beards. We didn't come like we just got off a horse with fringes on and talk. No, we didn't come like we came from out of space. We came strictly with a coat, a jacket, clean cut, and talking because they, they had no idea what they were, they were going to let on the show. But once the tape started rolling, they couldn't stop it. See, and Christ says, he sent us out like sheep among wolves, be wise as serpent, harmless as a dove. When you look in scripture, sometimes they thought Paul was an Egyptian. They thought he was a Roman in one city. So he understood how to dress the part, but that didn't change what he was inwardly and his mission. And by that, he was able to convert others of other cultures. Okay? So there's ways of operating and still being a Hebrew and not compromising yourself, but getting in to spread the truth. Let me show you. Read. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. He is not a Jew that is one outwardly. Read. Neither is that circumcision which is outwardly in the flesh. It's not about the flesh all the time or the out outward appearance. Read. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. Yeah. And circumcision is that of the heart. Circumcision of that is of the heart. Go to Matthew 23 and 1. Because there were some people running around with the garments, and they were running around with the garments to show that they were more special and higher than everyone else during the time of Christ. And he talked about it. Read Matthew 23, and let's start at the first verse. Matthew 23 and 1. Read. Then spake Yeshia to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. They, they're the lawgivers. That's what Christ was saying. Read. All therefore whatsoever they, they bid you observe, that observe and do. So he didn't tell them not to follow the laws the Pharisees and scribes were given. He says everything they tell you, observe and do proving you that Christ never said break the commandments read but do not ye after their work but don't do the way they're doing it because what for they say and do not because they're telling you to do it but they're not doing it so he's saying you still should follow the law but don't do it the way they're doing it right read for they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born that means they put laws on you that's hard to bear Read and say, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves would not move them with one of their fingers. But they don't deal with trying to move the burdens off. They want to oppress you with more and more burdens, and yet they're free to do whatever they want to do. Read, but all their works they do for it to be seen of men. It says they're doing works to be seen of men. Read, they make broad their. Their, their, phylacteries. Phylacteries. their phylacteries. Their phylacteries. They make broad their phylacteries. They, it was a phylactery they had, so that those don't understand what this is. It was a thing that actually held the scrolls of the law. 
So the same way if a cop stop you on the street today and they start pulling out their tickets trying to see what code you broke, the Pharisees had a phylactery and if they seen you breaking the law, they would pull it out and read it before you. They was like the law give us real time. Read and enlarge, enlarge their borders of their garments. And they enlarged the borders of their garments, read, and loved the uppermost rooms at feast, and loved the highest seat at the feast, and the chief seats in the synagogue. And in the synagogues, they want to be the high persons, read, and greetings in the markets. They want to be called rabbi, rabbi, read, and to be called of men, rabbi, rabbi, read, but be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ. And all ye are brethren. And all ye are brethren. So as you can see here, they was using the garments in the way they looked as a power over the people. And see, Christ was pointing them out to show you that Christ wasn't wearing what they were wearing. Purposely. Christ was a common man among the people purposely. So everything he did was to show the inward of the spirit and not the outward appearance okay and Christ didn't have a yarmulke on okay let's go to let's go to Romans I mean let's go to Corinthians 11 let's go to Corinthians 11 read Corinthians 11 and 1 be ye followers of me even as I also am of Christ. Go ahead. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I deliver them. First Corinthians you. 11. Yeah, get, that's it. Read the third verse. Verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of every man is your shire. Read. And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is the man. Read. And the head of Christ is the most high. And the head of Christ is a higher. Read. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonor of his head. So if you praying or prophesying with your head covered, you dishonor who? You dishonor of his head. You, dis you, you dishonor of your head. Who is your head? Christ. See, and that's why you see what we have on the screen. You have this guy with a yarmulke on his head because he's praying dishonor in Christ. He don't believe in Christ. You got this guy on your screen here. Who he's praying to? He's praying to Satan. He's dishonoring his head with a yarmulke by covering the crown of his head. He don't believe in Christ. What about this guy here? He has a kufi on. You can't see it. He has a yarmulke on and he don't believe in Christ but he want to look spiritual with his scroll open. He's a Satanist dishonoring Christ this is what you wear to dishonor Christ you cover you notice it distinctly is made for the crown of your head that's what it's made for it's made to dishonor Christ but you notice we have on a metri so the part that we have uncovered is the hat they made to dishonor Christ I wanted to make that clear you got that? Finish reading. Verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonor of his head. So if I had my head covered, I would be dishonoring Christ. Read. But every woman that prayeth or prophesies with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. But if a woman prophesy, like you see in the churches, the women out there got her hair done and all up on a pulpit and preaching, which well, she shouldn't be up there. And she got a head all uncovered. You dishonoring your head. You dishonoring either your husband or Christ. A woman is supposed to be shamefaced and covered while praying or prophesying. Now, of course, Paul said that, listen, he's not going to be contentious in this matter. If you want to be contentious in it, then there is no law for you. If you want to contend against it, you go ahead and do what you want to do. He wasn't going to force it, but you're not going to receive what you need to receive in the spirit by being disobedient. Now, let me go into the law of when the Gentiles, during the time of Maccabees, and it's in your Apocrypha, if you can follow us, in 2 Maccabees, the fourth chapter, will show you 
when the Gentiles gave us a yarmulke or kufi. And, and this is when it began, the Hebrews wearing a covering. Let's start at 2 Maccabees, the fourth, the fourth chapter. And let's start right here, the first verse. 2 Maccabees 4 and 1. This Simon now, of who we spake, of who we spake before, having been a betrayer of the money and of his country. He was a betrayer of uh, for money of his country. This is a Simon who for money sold out his country. He sold out the nation of Israel. Read. Slandered Anius as if he had terrified Hel Helodius. It says right here. Yeah. Helodius. Helodius. Go ahead. And been the worker and been the worker of these evils. Thus was he thus was he bold to call him a traitor. He was bold to call him a traitor. You can read a little lower. Go ahead. That had deserved well of the city and tendered his own nation and was and was so zealous of the laws. But when their hatred went went so far that by that by one of Simon faction where you at? Go ahead, you can read it there. Go ahead. Okay. But when their hatred went so far that by one of Simon's faction, murders were committed. Murders were committed, read. Anya seeing the danger of this contention, and that Apollonius, Apollonius, excuse me, as being the governor of Celis Celis Celesiria and Phoenice, did rage and increase Simon's malice. He went to the king, not to be an accuser of his countrymen, but seeking the good of all, both public and private. For he saw that it was impossible that the state should continue quiet and Simon leave his foley unless the king did look thereunto. But after the death of, Sel of Seleucius, Seleucius, now Seleucius was one of the four generals under Alexander the Greek. After the death of Seleucius, read, when Antioch, Antiochus, Antiochus, excuse me, called Epiphanes, took the kingdom, Jason, the brother of Anius, labored, labored underhand to be high priest. To be high priest. Now, for those who don't know Antiochus and Epiphanes, Antiochus and Epiphanes was a Greek. After Seleucius died, he was put in place, and he went into Jerusalem and sacked Jerusalem and started forcing our people to deal with the customs of the Greeks, eating pork and all those things. That was Antiochus and Epiphanes. Read verse 8. Promising unto the king by intercession 303 score talents of silver and the other revenue 80 talents. Beside this, he promised to assign 150 more if he might have, if he might have license to set him up a place for exercise and for the training up of youth. For the training up of the youth. So he said, listen, I need you to set up some recreation centers so that we can have training and exercise places so that you can do games to the gods the way we have it today. You notice they, they got gyms where you exercise and then you go into the Olympics. This is when this started and our people had no part of this at first. But now he's saying for this money, I need you to bring some of these Hebrews in and make some exercise for yourselves so that y'all uh, exercise places and gyms so that you can do games to our gods. Listen clearly. And for the training up of youth in the fashions of the heathen. In the fashions of the what? In the fashions of the heathen. In the fashions of the heathen. Here your, here's your Olympic games right here. Read. And to write them of Jerusalem by the name of Antiochus. And you write them the Antiochians. So now these Israelites are becoming Antiochians and playing in the arenas. And, and now this one guy is being paid to recruit Israelites into these games. Why? Because we could run fast, we were stronger, we could war, we were faster. Sound familiar, right? Read on. Verse 10, which when the king had granted and he had gotten into his hand the rule he fought, he fought with 
brought his own nation to Greek to to Greekish fashion. And he brought his own nation into Greekish fashion. We and the royal pro privileges privileges granted granted a special favor to the Jews. So this so now there was a privilege to the Jews. We by the means of of John the father of. Epolemus, yeah, the Epolemus. Go ahead, the Epolemus, who went and who went ambassador to Rome. He was the ambassador of Rome, read for amity and aid. He took away and putting down the governments which were according to the law. He brought up new customs against the law. So now they put down the law and brought up new customs against God's law. You notice everything is intertwined. Sports and everything. Now, if you want to be integrated in society, you must shun the customs of your fathers. I'm showing you how we gradually lost our customs. Read verse 12. For he built gladly a place of exercise under the tower itself. He went into the tower itself and built a place for exercise for their Olympics. Go ahead. And brought the chief young men under his subjection. And made them wear a hat. And made them wear a what? And made them wear a hat. And made them wear a what? And made them wear a hat. And made them wear a hat. And when you do the research of the ancient Grecian hats, guess what it is? Look on your screen. That's it. There it is. So your kufis. And your yarmulkes are hats of the heathen and its purpose so that you can dishonor your God and so that you can not only dishonor your God, but you will dishonor Christ. The heathens made us do this. Before that, the Hebrews did not cover their head unless they were priests or working as priests. Okay. So, as you can see, that was thoroughly broken down. And before we go into the second half of this, we'll open it up for questions. If anyone have any questions according to the customs of, of, of apparel, to make sure everyone understands before we go any further. I'm going to take the pause off. Okay, does anyone have any questions according to that? We'll have them for you very soon if that's what you wish to have. Don't worry about it. Someone asked, did Christ wear a mitri? Uh, we don't have any proof on whether or not he wore a mitri at all. But we know it's written of all in scriptures. It wouldn't surprise me if he did. But I'm not going to say definitively he did because it doesn't say. Fitted hats, believe it or not, fitted hats are actually the same as a kufi, the same as a yarmulke, but it has a brim on it. It has a catch on it. Someone asks, is there anything wrong with wearing a hat or a beanie? Is something wrong with it if you're praying or prophesying? Okay. And first of all, I wouldn't wear it at all because it's, it's, telling, it's telling the world that I'm dealing with the customs of the heathen. The same thing with any covering. You're not supposed to cover your head or the crown of your head while praying or prophesying. Okay. The dimensions of a metri, if y'all would like to make them yourselves, uh, it's about eight inches wide, and you can make them between 15 to 20 inches, I mean 20 feet long, between 15 to 20 feet long. It would sew one straight line, and then you would sew the end, turn it inside out, and sew the other end and fold it into one, one time, and roll it. It's that simple. All right?
Okay, let me get to the second part of the lesson because we're going into other parts of, uh, of this that's outside of the, the tenets of questions. I was, we wanted to keep it within the topic. So we're going to pause the chat and go into the second part real quick. One moment.